Hello everybody. Last I left you with the vertex uh, and we found out that the angle at the vertex for the great circle track makes is 90 and our course on the vertex is east and west depending upon which way we are going. And uh, the angle what it makes uh, uh, with the equator or the course at the equator so today we'll just uh, try to find out uh, how to go about uh, solving this question. This was the question which I had started off with to find out your initial course and uh, final course and uh, the distances. And these were the values what we had got. Now, y vertex, we already know about it. So, how do we go about solving it is that we look at these two angles here, A and B. If both of them are acute, then the vertex is assumed to be lying in the, uh, somewhere in the, uh, somewhere in between uh, the two points, somewhere in the triangle itself. And we know that the angle at the vertex, what the great circle makes is 90 degrees. So I have just drawn a meridian through vertex and angle is 90 degrees. Now this is just a arbitrary line what I have drawn, not necessarily that it is here, it could be anywhere, but it is going to lie somewhere in between these two points inside the triangle. Now we have got two triangles which are right angles, spherical triangles. I can solve any one of them using Napier's rules. And uh, the Napier rules are this. You will excuse me that I keep on uh, repeating this because I want you to be well conversant with this. And we have to find out the position. For finding out the position, we should know PV because we know that the latitude is from equator to the point. And if I find out PV, 90 minus PV will be my latitude. The second thing what I have to find out is the longitude find out my longitude, I should find out the d-long between the meridian of either position A or position B, that is the angle here. And once I find it out, I can find out the longitude of vertex. So here, and I have written down plus minus here because it depends which way you are going. So sometimes you might have to add and sometimes you have to subtract depending upon the triangle what you are using. So now we have a spherical triangle up to me which I want to use and we have to find out PV or either of these two angles. So I make this cross like this with the center and I am using this triangle PAV, uh, PVA or PAV. You could use this either cases you will get the same answer. Now, as I said, the angle is 90 is made by two sides. So, you start off with writing two sides here. This is PV and VA. On these two sides, you write down what is, what is opposite these two. So, what is opposite PV? You write down 90 minus. And what is opposite VA? You write down here, 90 minus. So, 90 minus PVA is angle A. Angle A and I have written down and we know angle A so I have written down 90 minus this and I have picked it marked there. Opposite VA is angle P dash. I do not know, I have to calculate that. And the remaining is PA. I know PA. And I put the value there, substituted the value here. Now these are the two things what I have to find out which are coming up as a question mark here for you. I have to find out these two. When you are solving these questions, always use the things what you have already solved. Don't use the things which you are going to solve now for solving the next thing. Because uh, whatever mistake you have made further uh, earlier will be carried forward. Otherwise, you will be making more mistakes here. So, let us start with uh, finding out PV. These two parts I know, they become opposite to this. So, I can use the formula sine of middle part cos. Cos is O, 
opposite and uh, you can see that these things have come as opposite here I substitute these values and get my PV I'm not showing you the full calculations uh, uh, but you go ahead and show all the calculations for your examination part of it now here I've got PV 90 minus PV is my latitude so I got my latitude, I've written down PV here. I've not written down the latitude because this will be required for me to solve uh, the next step when I do intermediate points. For longitude, I have to calculate angle P. This is angle P. I can use this as the middle part and these two become adjacent. Tan A, adjacent. So, we can use the formula of adjacent. adjacent. So, these two have become adjacent sides. And substitute the value angle P 99, 99. If you notice here, I have written down east because the longitude of vertex is to the east of the longitude of A. So, your D long is basically. Easterly, I know the longitude of A, I got the vertex. So this is how you go about calculating your vertex. I'm just showing you another question here. And uh, now here the angles will be different. So uh, I'll continue here. Uh, I'm not showing you the full calculations because I want to show you. I found out my DLAT gives me an indication of what way I'm supposed to be going. Always use the higher pole. As I said, that I'll be interested in the highest latitude which it touches the southern side because all the great circles, all the circles, what you draw, curve towards the pole. So the one which is curving towards, more towards the south, I'd be interested in knowing because I'm going on a higher side of this. Okay, if the vertex is not uh, what do you call more than this doesn't make a difference because you are touching only 25 here but always draw the pole on the higher side go to the pole I draw the meridian through that now here with the spherical triangle and latitudes 90 minus so this is all what I am showing you is only for you to understand once you have understood it you need not draw it like this you have straight away come to PA and PB this is just for you to understand how you add and subtract. Now B is on the other side of the equator. I will add it up. And angle P is my D long. Yeah. Now I have the triangle ready for solving. I can, as I said, I can solve it with sine, cos or, uh, or uh, what do you call ABC tables, which I will discuss later. I am using cos here. The cos formula is simple. I'll just repeat it once more. Uh, I won't repeat it after this. You use the cos of the angle. You take the side what is opposite that first thing. So AB. Then write the two sides what are missing. Write down here and sign of this. Very simple formula and you got your distance AB. As I said, I'm not showing any calculations here. Now, for... Initial course, the same thing. I got the angle as 120. Now the course is named with the elevated pole what you have used here, that is south and belong is east, southeast. Southeast, 120, 60 degrees. Now for angle B, I calculated, I got 46. Final course, Opposite to the elevated pole that is north and your belong east. So your final course is 46 degrees northeast. So we have got angle A, angle B and angle C. I took up this example just to show it to you here because this here in this case that angle one angle is uh, more than uh, 90 degrees. That is one is acute, one is obtuse. In the previous case it was both were acute. So the uh, the vertex was lying inside the triangle. If you have a situation like this where the one angle is acute and one angle, angle is obtuse, the vertex lies 
on the side of the greater angle and outside the triangle. So here I have taken purposely showing you this uh, thing that one is acute, one is obtuse. So your vertex will be outside the triangle towards the angle which is bigger, that is your obtuse angle, something like this. And the other reason to be solving this is to tell you about angle A. If, if you start solving this triangle PVA, which I am doing it here. Now that we, I know angle A, this is a straight line 180. So this angle A for solving VAP would be 60. So now I have this triangle if I had to use this. Of course, if you are not interested in using this, you could have used this triangle PVA, PVB. So this was not necessary step. But I just wanted to let you know that you could solve this triangle also VAP. Now, in this case, I am solving this triangle here. And I told you how to find out angle A. Now you make the cross like this, start off with the two sides which are making the angle. Then you write the sides uh, opposite. And here the value of angle A was known to me, 60. Same angle P, I write down 90 minus P. And what is remaining? And I know PA. And I have to find out for latitude. I have to find out PV, uh, sorry, uh, PV, and uh, for longitude, I've got to find out this angle here. So now, using the Napier's rules for latitude, sine of middle part, opposite, opposite. Substituting all the values, you get PV. PV is 45, 90 minus PV is your latitude. As you can see, I'm just writing down the value of PV. I'm not writing the, down the value of uh, latitude here. Because this will be using when we will be calculating intermediate points. Longitude of P, I have to find out angle P. Now angle P is here. I can use this as a middle part and these two will become adjacent. For adjacent A, tan. I can use the formula for tan here to find out this, this middle point adjacent adjacent substituting all those values I got 45 degrees here and if you notice I have written down west because longitude of vertex is west of the longitude of A so this is where you got to be careful of which way your delong is depending upon what triangle you are using and how the triangles are made. So this is an important part, part for you to remember east to west. I know the longitude of A. I know the delong. I can find out the longitude of vertex. And here, the position of vertex I have written down here. So now we have come to know how to find out our initial course, final course, distances and the vertex. I'll get back to you with intermediate points. Thank you very much for being with me. See you. Have a good day.